Hi, HRN listeners. We're celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we have a really fun campaign and an ask for you. This 15th anniversary tour is aiming to bring you closer to unique food and music experiences in some of the most exciting cities in America. All the while, we're raising funds to support our work empowering the next generation of food system storytellers through our fellowship programs. Here's how it works. Donate to HRN and be entered into a raffle in the city of your choice to win a dinner for two at a noteworthy restaurant and tickets for two to a concert at a prominent local venue. We have incredible partners in New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Nashville, Las Vegas, Charleston, Asheville, and Ardmore, Pennsylvania, who have donated a meal for two and two tickets to a concert of the winner's choice. And all donations help fund our fellowship programs, where we're helping to build essential workforce readiness skills and food system storytelling skills. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15. Thank you. My name is Brandon Hoy, co-owner of Roberta's, a super duper awesome place. Roberta's is a very, 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 very proud sponsor of the Heritage Radio Network. We're also super awesome. Thank you, Heritage. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network, broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. If you like this program, visit heritageradionetwork.org for thousands more. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America, from border to border, coast to coast, and all the ships at sea. Streaming live from the County of Kings, Brooklyn, New York City, on the Heritage Radio Network. Are you ready for the fastest half hour on the internet today? It's the Mike and Judy Show. Spanning the globe for high-minded hijinks and low-brow kicks to bring you the best in sex, drugs, rock and roll, and nuclear fission. They're too bad for radio and too good-looking for television. And now, here they are. The Nichols and May of the Now Generation, your hosts, Mike Edison and Judy McGuire. La 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 la. Merry Christmas, Judy. Merry Christmas. It's your day of days. It's my favorite show of the year. It's our Christmas show. You're looking so festive today. I brought in Christmas lights. And I spiked the eggnog. Yes, that, that is your role in Christmas. <laughs> We should make that a new ritual. Well, we have a great show today. I'm very, very excited. Very. We, we've got a little bit of the secular and the sacred today. And the satanic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Santa and Satan, they're very, very close. They're very cl- Only, you know, a little bit of a, what do you call it? Anyway. Speaking of Satan, did anybody watch the Rolling Stones on TV last night? You know, I just want to say from what I saw on YouTube this morning when I was watching, that Paul McCartney with Nirvana was a lot more convincing than the Rolling Stones with the Black Keys. It's unfortunate. <laughs> they we've, need to go bye bye. We've, we've come a, we've come a long way. It is you know I can't watch it because it's like it's like watching. It's like if it were my cat, I'd put it to sleep. Right. <laughs> and it's so sad, you know. And I love my cat more than anything. I feel that way about the Rolling Stones. But it was not a hard decision to make when the time came. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen. Other, I still sort of stopped going to see bands that I used to love because it was so depressing. Like. Um, the fall, the last time I saw them, which oh, was like man. twenty years ago, and that was too late. It was right. just like, oh God, Marky Smith, stop it. But um, it's a young man's game, Judy. <laughs> it's like the Stones could not make a bad record for so long, and then they ha- seem to have had a hard time making a good one. You know? It's Mick. It's Mick. Because Mick is it's a dick. Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, it's Mick. I mean, he's the guy who says, "Let's get Lady Gaga to sing." Right. Give me shelter. I mean, it's, you know, it seems very cynical. to What? Me. Well, yeah, she sang um, the background parts in Give oh, Me uh, Shelter last night, and it's like you know, Mick is like, "Let's go disco. Let's go punk. Let's get you know, Babyface to produce us and." Well, Neil yeah. Young did some stupid stuff too. But, but hey, we should introduce but, but our Neil, guest before, so people will well, know well, who well, else well, is well, talking. Let me, let me stand up for Neil for a moment. I like but, Neil, but, but Neil, he, Neil's unpredictable. He's an artist, and he's, he is he does some pretty whacked out shit. But he does it for himself. Where the, the Stones thing just seems Mick's always chasing some trend. He always wants to make the record he heard in the discotheque last well, night. Well, because the new woman he's banging, the new twenty five year old, told him about like the Justin record. Bieber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, it worked on some girls. Which yeah, was, that was really know. good. Well, well, Some Girls is great because the punk rock stuff sounded great, and even the disco stuff sounded sounded good, too. Um, but that was a long time ago. That was like 30 fucking years oh, ago. God, I hate, when, I hate 1978. When we hear it was, it, how many decades ago? Re- 34 like, years ago. Ah! Ah! 
Merry Christmas, Judy. <laughs> 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 Who we've got today? Who's, who we are have, awesome guests. Oh, yeah, let's hear for Joe the engineer. Fest. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> We have Billy Hop, who came on my radar because of my friend. He came on my radar. Um, he, I, Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I had to return it. Uh, he's he is um, Mr. Provincetown, my friend. Oh wait, now I get it. <laughs> oh my god, the eggnog already. Um, if Billy Hop, you want your eggnog spiked? Ask a Jew. <laughs> who does scream along with Billy in Provincetown? And he has a fantastic show happening next Sunday night at Joe's Pub at nine nine thirty. Yeah, yeah, and it's it is called. I had to write it down. Suck my dickens or screwed you. <laughs> <laughs> so that and is to, true. And to keep us on, on on the path of the righteous today, I have my my, my old friend uh, Rabbi Dan Bronstein here to uh, offer some perspective on the war against Christmas and um and and, and what what we really think of you, Goyim. Good to be here. <laughs> it's awesome to have you, Dan. Thank you. you. Know, Thank you. For- I met Dan. When we met, I was um, working on a story about uh, Jews for Jesus oh, dear. for, for uh, Heb Magazine, which later became uh, sort of a uh, set piece of my book, I Have Fun Everywhere right. I Go. And I needed someone to explain to me what Jews traditionally thought uh, of Jesus, historically, because we, we live in fear of him. Suburban Jews live in fear of Jesus and fe- live in fear of Christmas. You know, it's just something that's not explained. And Not in my suburbs. How's the, how's the, the Jews don't fear the Christmas? No, the Jews have Christmas trees. That, that's, that's even more fucked up. <laughs> so, like, and they don't have nativity scenes, and not every Jew has a Christmas tree, but there's plenty of Christmas. They're trying to pass. No, I think it's just they like everyone likes presents and sparkly things. Well, well, anyway, what Dan told me to do, he gave me the sage advice, is to go watch the Life of Brian, <laughs> the Monty Python movie, and therein all would be explained. Right. What's well, the best uh, film out there about first, second century, and all the different groups that were running around then, including early Christians, and and early rabbinic Jews, and other other. Uh, different sects of Jewry, and Jesus was one of, uh, the way we understand him now, he was one of many, and a lot of the stuff that he's quoted as saying in the Christian Bible is straight from the rabbinic tradition. So this idea of him becoming son of God, that's much later via Paul, another former Jew. So um, the things that he's talking about, resurrection, um, that's a traditional Jewish idea, albeit in a different form. Um, baptism uh, goes back to the mikvah, which is a Jewish tradition. A lot of the stuff he's saying is is straight out of uh, Judaism, and uh, not Judaism. that weird. So basically, Christianity is to Judaism what like Windows is to like the Apple operating system. Um, that would be too complicated <laughs> uh, for me to think about. I guess it would be um, we're feeding maybe, the rabbi bourbon. Ma- maybe the wing, the way the wings are to the Beatles. <laughs> ooh, 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 take that! And there's your war on Christmas. And Judy, you love Christmas more than anyone I, I know. Love Christmas. So, and how are you feeling about this war against Christmas that I keep uh, hearing about? From it my... really hasn't affected me. <laughs> um, so I'm really, I really don't believe that there, there's a war against Christmas. I'm an atheist, and I. I celebrate Christmas happily. And this bums Mike out, and I know he was hoping that you would convert me to some sort of, if not Judaism, some sort of like... Well, I'm, not, I'm definitely not in the business of conversion. There's, there's one time in Jewish history, about 2,200 years ago, uh, when the Jews did, uh, under the Maccabees, uh, second-generation Maccabees, okay. uh, who, who went and uh, forcibly converted some people um, who lived to the and south that of Israel. <laughs> Uh, they, they, it didn't work out that great, um, but I would say that nothing with the Maccabees uh, turned out that great, uh, despite what we celebrate and teach our kids. It's a, it's a more complicated story, but it's not traditional. I'm totally uninterested in, in converting people. Thank you. you know, My understanding um, is that the Jews don't recruit, right? I mean, no. if you actually want to convert, they, they, you know, you, you have to, you have like, to try hard. do it yourself. You, you have to you really turn people pursue away it. Traditionally. Right. Um, I, I learned about that. This is really embarrassing on Sex in the City. <laughs> hey, you take it where you can find it, Judy. <laughs> they, were, they were talking about that on Sex and the City. Yeah, she yeah. tried to convert three times, and the rabbi kept. Well, turning we make away. it really fucking hard for you, right? I mean, you really got to like jump through hoops and then like climb walls, and it's not easy. It depends on how you do it, but yes, it's a, it's a process, and you need to know that people are serious, and you're not, you know, you can't uh, make a statement, you know, that all of a sudden I've seen the light, and and now I'm, you know, it doesn't work that way. So, so Billy, you're doing sort of a non-traditional Christmas show. I don't believe <laughs> there's going to be much. Um, suck my dickens Did Suck my dickens <laughs> I think you might have The same sort of take On Christmas as I do Can you explain I, um, yourself Sure Sure I um, I love uh, I love Christmas But it's uh, You know I, I, I just can no longer Like partake In like 
singing Christmas songs and like you know but for some reason it's like and I, you know I worked in retail for a long time and it's like oh, if God. you play Christmas music like white people go for their wallets and as soon you know, you know nobody knows what that like phenomenon is but now it's like the culture is so saturated with it so we're gonna sing Bob Dylan songs uh, with Lily Jew. Taylor huh Jew like, yeah I'm really not all that impressed with white people well, I mean, <laughs> Jews have a long history of doing all the Christmas stuff. Sure. You know? Have you heard Bob Dylan's? You're a big Bob Dylan fan, right? Uh, yes. Right, Dan? I mean, have you heard his Christmas record? It's I fabulous. Not, it's fabulous. <laughs> I love it. Are you, you kidding? You like the sign of someone dying of tuberculosis, oxygen tanks. I, I have to it. admit that I don't keep up with, you know, Dylan or the Stones. I, I sort of stopped in the 19th. It's a little more current 70s. than you might. <laughs> I think I think Dylan really had a resurgence. You know, we were talking about the Stones, who were like brilliant and fell off, whereas Neil Young has been pretty good the whole way through. But Dylan has had a huge. It's awesome. Like, Those later records were were really great. I mean, great. he made a string of great records. Time out of mind. I think Love and Theft is something of a masterpiece too. Yeah, and um, the Modern Times is a close second. It's, great. it's very it's very good. Yeah, but he lost his voice, and it, it breaks my heart. I've seen him recently, and he can't sing. Um, he's either got arthritis or carpal tunnel syndrome. He's not playing the guitar. And it's just, you know, I feel bad. He's a troubadour. I love Bob. He's still out on the road right. doing 150, 200 gigs a year. He has not stopped. And you got to respect that. That's a great tradition, right? Well, if I, if I it's very Jewish, make, right? Oh, yes. I mean, he, uh, and he goes up and down. You never know what you're going to find when you go see him. You know, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's terrible. But I just want to say, uh, going back to the initial part of this discussion, that one old band that's, you know, stayed great, I think, has been the, not their album, but the Stooges. <laughs> Oh, as a yeah. live performance. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and he's like, he's, he's got to be mixed age. I mean, he's, he's, he's grandpa age, and he's yeah, like yeah. so flexible and crazy. Oh, yeah, he's great. Well, you know, it's all those things that were supposed to kill him just made him, made him stronger. And you know, <laughs> it's, it's true, you know, it's, 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 that's why he's alive, because of the rock and roll. It wasn't the rock and roll that killed him. It's, it's not in spite of the rock and roll that he's alive. It's because of the rock and roll right. that he's alive. Speaking of which, you got a song for us? Sure, yeah. You guys want to hear a song? Yeah, what do you got? Yes, please. Um, well, we've got this new record coming out. Uh, it's well, a... Basically, I just want to pour some more eggnog. Sure, yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> um, let me do... Uh... We'll do it. It's a breakup record, so I thought maybe um, I'll do a breakup <laughs> song for you. <laughs> well, then, it's going to be a heartbreaking Christmas, Judy. This isn't so heartbreaking. <laughs> it's all my fault. I guess I never should have stopped to suffer fools. But I never pressed for details when you held me and you smiled. I forgot when you're unhappy. You simply change the rules without regard for anyone. You narcissistic child. When we heard that he was coming here, your eyes went wide with shock. I should have seen the future then, but chose instead to leave as you regaled the dinner party with your memories of his cock. I'd never pegged you for a size queen. Never pegged me for naive. But honey, I'm I'm not angry I'm just so sorry that you boys got caught You really had a clever thing going Hey, I'm sorry That was all my fault And so he came just like the rain Pursuing you in cycles I pleaded for your honesty Because of my dark hunch You started taking him instead of me Over to Michael's Then you sucked his dick in my bed And both took me out to lunch Well it's such a joy That every fucking faggot in L.A. Knew all about you too Except for me I was at work That's a really shitty place To put your friends But who's to say That's what I get For paying the rent For three years Fucking jerk But honey I'm not angry, seriously, just so sorry that your boys got caught, you really had a funny thing going, hey, boys, I'm sorry, that was all my fault. Well, first you called me crazy, then confessed in just that order. So I left to meditate upon your total lack of class. I tried to stay together, but my dick, I guess, was shorter. Cause when I left, you called him back to fuck you up the ass. Oh, well, you didn't tell me yet again. Just sucked and fucked and lied. Thank God my friend walked in on you and called me on the line. Now the smell of death engulfs us. Something beautiful has died. So go take it up the ass all day, but not on my damn dime. But honey, I'm not angry Never was just so sorry that your boys got caught You really had a funny thing going Hey, boys, I'm sorry That was all my fault Well, I've been great to both of you in public But it's sad that part of me is dead now In the resting stormy weather So I thought I'd drop this note to show you I'm no longer mad 
So congratulations, Matt and Tom. I'm sure you're still together. Merry Christmas. Yay! That was great. I hate Matt and Tom. <laughs> well, I- that's the worst though. Is when you've supported a guy and then he. Every lady I know has been through that. Thank you. Oh, holidays are so hard. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Oh, uh, that was, was that sad? That was supposed to be. That was really <laughs> funny. Empowering, yeah. So you're going to be spending time with your family this Christmas, Judy? Yes, I invited them all over for Christmas Eve. Yeah, and how's that looking like to shape up? It's going to be really great. <laughs> um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm making lasagna and um, a traditional Irish meal. <laughs> <laughs> really, I thought maybe just a bowl of bourbon and some crackers. That's what I'm going to be having in the kitchen. I'll be lapping away with wow. next to my cat on the floor. Dan, uh, maybe you can offer some advice to our, our listenership about how to get along with our families at this difficult time. It's such a high argument a risk zone. You know, the, I mean, it's tough, right? Families. Tough. It's already started. I've, I'm getting like my brother texted me not to buy my niece hot pants. She's three. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's a tough one because yeah. uh, also don't get her a bong. Yeah. <laughs> You know, try and have a sense of humor because there's a, a way that uh, relatives can uh, make you crazy that uh, no other group of people can. And I think it's something about the level, the closer you are to certain people, the more they can make you crazy. The more you hate there's them. There's something about the intimacy <laughs> there that's so hard. So if you can uh, try and have a sense of humor and, uh, and, and not sort of uh, react immediately to certain things, just sort of... Uh, what do you do? You step back, you count to 10, you go check on the potatoes. <laughs> Usually I, I, I step back and talk to my wife and deconstruct the, uh, the offensive statement and then... So even sort of a rabbi has things. a crazy-ass family who Oh, bugs yeah, you. everybody does. That's <laughs> part of the human experience. <laughs> It why, really is. Why is it? It seems like, you know, somebody made a comment once that as we get older, we become more ourselves. But it seems like with families, like everybody's got like an archetype or, a, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like there's one fight that these two people have to have every year. It's like, right. is, that a, is it a comfort to us to like keep playing the same drama out over and over and over again? Or um, Yeah, I think it probably is a comfort the, to descend into argument as opposed to talk about real things. In a way, it's, it's easier. I actually had um, an argument turn on its head recently, which was too too late because my mother, who always used to bug me about it, is dead. But my dad would also carry it on. He, when I was five, the priest that married them um, told me that told my parents that I was a very negative person. And yeah. whenever we got into fights, my my parents would say, "Father Hermley was right. You're a very negative person." So anyway, like a year ago, I was like, "Let's see what happened to Father Hermley." Turns out he and his brother were child molesting priests. Oh, great. Wow. So I immediately <laughs> downloaded the whole PDF and sent it to my dad, like his court case. I'm laughing. PDF, is that short but for the- pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, you know. I'm laughing, but the rabbi said, oh, great. <laughs> I mean, well, to say something like up. that, though, I would say is totally inappropriate and unhelpful. Well, and he said that in the first place. I mean, that's ludicrous. I actually think I got off pretty easy. <laughs> Which is being told I was negative. I mean, that, I mean compared to you know, what you were just t- referring to, but yeah. I mean, why would you... I would never do that. I would, uh, I would talk to the individual. I wouldn't go and say... I don't see what purpose it would be to say to parents, oh, your daughter's really negative. What, what constructive uh, purpose would that play? And what Judy you- McGuire, negative? Our Judy? I know, I'm like Pollyanna. Wh- whatever that even <laughs> means, negative. <laughs> whatever that means. I was just glad I got my revenge. Well, sounds like yeah, it. fuck them, you know. It's amazing <laughs> to me though the way that people can, you know, they they can be so judgmental of other people and yet so bl- you know so blind to what they're doing themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe he was just feeling rejected, you know, and that's what he. <laughs> well, he negative. did prefer little boys, did to he? Girls, I think, so I think, I think I Jesus like, had something to say about that whole thing about judge not lest you be judged. Correct. And, and a splinter in your eye and the piece of lumber and the two by four sure. in yours. Or, or but something. that's not the stuff that anybody seems to focus on anymore. Sadly. Yeah, Catholics are mean. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, um, I've always said I'm okay with Jesus, um, but to blame his followers for things like the Ku Klux Klan and the moral majority and miracle women. It's It's like blaming the Grateful Dead for having fans that smell bad. Well, also, you know, there's certain things, um, you know, that I really appreciate from Christianity, miracle whipping, one of them, (laughs) but also uh, the Protestant Reformation that did a lot of good things because that established the idea that you could have agreements without going disagreements without going and murdering each other the idea that you could have 
denominations as opposed to sex meant that you could right. coexist. Martin so Luther, that's OG. Good, so that's a good thing. I think that um, you know certainly Jews were influenced by that. As well, well, I think the message is a okay. I mean, I mean, he stood up for lepers and whores. He, right. he turned water into wine. The people who were uh, powerless. I don't think that Jesus' message, if we can believe, you know, what, what we've got, you know, was significantly different from what you find in Song of Solomon or what you find from Socrates or the Buddha. I think that it's, but you know, the interpretation of it has been a little bastardized. A little iffy. But he's yeah. way more interesting than Socrates, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but, well, well, according, getting... to Bill, according to Bill O'Reilly, you know, Christianity is just a philosophy. I, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> it's not Whatever a religion. That I don't know what the fuck it means either. But getting back into the spirit of the day, our Christmas spectacular. It says the atheist. Says the atheist. <laughs> We're going to hear um, a highlight of last year's Christmas oh. show. Um, Princess Superstars. Um, rap, she rapped live in our studio. Nice. Um, our Christmas is, show really Christmas is more and more spectacular waga. every year. All right. It's the Mike and Judy show here on the Heritage Radio Network. Here's Princess Superstar. See you guys in a sec. Woo! Hooray! Yay! It's Christmas! Yay! I love Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it snows. I love ho ho hoes, hot cocoa, not King Cole. Happy people throw them bows. I like parades. I like charades, pumpkin pie on paper plates, black guys and little girls in fresh dumb braids. I love Christmas. I love Santa. I love you, baby, and your Christmas swagger. Mistletoe, kissing you on tippy toe. Where did all my lipstick go? It's Christmas, yo. I love beaded sweaters, red and green, tinfoil letters, cheerful sweaters, being together, Justin Bieber. I love jingle bells, Christmas sales, chipping dales with Santa hats on the big cock tails. I love Christmas, I love Santa, I love you baby, and your Christmas swagger, I love mistletoe, kissing you on tippy toe, wetting all my lipstick go, it's Christmas yo. For December 2 5, I'm too live. Every inch of my 5 5 frame. More caboose than a toy train. Damn, that granny got game. Hey, my good friend Keenan. Man, sorry, dude, hit me back when it's did then. Getting ready for the weekend. Spending so much dough with Dwayne Reed. Tits the season. <laughs> I love Christmas. I love Santa. I love you, baby. And your Christmas swagger. I love mistletoe, kissing you on tippy toe, where did all my lipstick go? It's Christmas, yo! I love Christmas, I love Santa, everybody! I love you, baby, and your Christmas swagger. I love Christmas, and I love you. I love Christmas, everything except the mostly Jew. <laughs> that was so great. <laughs> She's so cute. She brought her little baby in. A nice and, uh, Jewish girl, princess superstar. Yeah, she was she was wonderful. Um so Billy, tell us what we can expect at your Christmas show. Well, um, I I always get a little uh, high concept with them, much to the dismay of the audience. Sometimes so. <laughs> I saw an excerpt from yeah, the you, Junkie Christmas. Just, oh yeah, that was we did. Uh, you and Neil Young have that same thing yeah, going on. Right. <laughs> Trans. Um, <laughs> But uh, so yeah, this year, uh, yeah, we did the, a very Nico Christmas a couple of years ago, which I think was a little I don't know how maybe a bit of a Christmas downer. Yeah, it was a little bit, but you know, everybody wants a downer for Christmas, don't you think? I you mean, get one anyway. Like, yeah, exactly. I'd like a handful of downers to help me get through the whole thing. I never thought I was too sentimental, but I remember like my very first Christmas by myself when I was an adult. I thought I, you know, I was like twenty four years old. I was living in Boston, and um, I, I spent the whole day like on heroin reading Dubliners by James Joyce and it was so oh fucking horrible <laughs> that I decided that I was going to celebrate Christmas regardless and so sometimes you know I get a little tree or I just go to somebody's house but it, it, it was more depressing than I thought I thought I could roll with it but yeah no. no it's like it's sort of ingrained in you it is 
It is. It's a, it's a tough time. It's yeah, like it's, I hate Valentine's Day, but having like a solo, lonely, wow. shitty Valentine's Day is just depressing. Horrible. You have to do something. You have I, to like go out with your friends. My least something. favorite night of the year is New Year's Eve. Oh. Without a doubt, I fucking hate New Year's Eve. Yeah. So you know, I was trying to think of something I hate more than New Year's Eve, and all I could come up with was Illinois Nazis. I hate the Fourth of <laughs> July possibly more than New Year's Eve. You don't like America. You don't, don't love your country, Judy? What's wrong with you? I don't like people throwing explosives off roofs. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me because I'm uptight. Um, Have so, some more eggnog. <laughs> it's, wor- it's working for me and but the there rabbi. Are, there are these societal <laughs> expectations, you know, that it's like your New Year's Eve needs to be awesome and your right. Christmas needs to be great. I'm sure it's like, you know, you're... you're what do you guys have? Like yeah, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh right? Passover. We go out and you ever get laid on Rosh Hashanah? <laughs> well, it depends Isn't that what on who you get laid for? by. Well, yes, actually, Purim. That's right. That's, that's right. your party holiday. Yeah. It's a drink between uh, uh, between uh, not knowing the difference between good and evil. That's uh, that's pretty drunk. But you don't have to drink that shitty wine, right? No, that's a myth. That okay, uh, people always yeah. ask me, you know, for like good. certain rituals. Do I need to get Mug and David? I'm like, no, you don't. Just get some. <laughs> A kosher myth wine perpetrated it by be, them, probably. Right, right. I mean, somehow that's become canon when it shouldn't be. Yeah, that is fucked up. The whole Jewish wine thing. They like pass over. Now there's a swinging holiday. Yes, it's a, pa- it's a holiday about freedom. Right. It's about shackles unchained. It's about like you know casting off oppression. Although, if you keep and, the the diet, you know, it's about restraining yourself also oh, at the same yeah. time. <laughs> there he is, the voice of reason. I knew I asked you to be here for. <laughs> um, but you know, but there's there's a big family holiday where there's a lot of booze going. Yes, for Jews, that's a lot of booze. Yes. You know, they say Jews don't drink. Here's here's one that does. <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're the exception. I, I never experienced, you know, people tell me that, like, that's the first time they got drunk, was at their family. Oh, I, I, I've seen more eight-year-olds hit the floor during Passover, you know, <laughs> growing up, you know, because, well, my, my parents are square and teetotalers and just kind of, um, they're, I'd like to say they're abstinious, but they're really just prudes, you know, mm-hmm. they don't really drink wine and they don't really get into the whole four cups thing, but. Well, for us, it was a, it was a, you know, I'm not complaining about this, it was a, Intellectual exercise and uh, the, the whole Seder. And, uh, you know, how long could you wait until you ate? That's sort of my mother's whole life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's still waiting for dinner. I'm not complaining. It was just never, you know, like my I never, I never even got dessert at Thanksgiving. Wow. <laughs> so so we're going to go out with a song from... from <laughs> is, is it already? Is it time? I know. It's like the fastest oh, half Judy, hour. Oh, I on. love our Christmas shows so it's much. It's so great. We have Christmas lights. Too bad it's not television. Um, to see so, that great reindeer sweater that you're wearing too. <laughs> yes. Um, so what are we going? We're going to hear something from the show. Sure. Or? No, you know what? This is a, a this is a punk band, the Garage Dogs, that I was in with my brothers. But we wrote a Christmas song, so we'll Excellent. send this out for everybody to have a merry Christmas. Uh, so, so before we go, though, Billy, tell us once again where we can see you next week. Uh, next you? Sunday night, the twenty third at Joe's Pub, nine thirty. Suck and you're my at, Dickens. And you're at BillyHuff.com. Yes, I am. All right, and uh, thanks again to my good friend uh, Dan Brownstein. Pleasure. Really good to see you, Dan. Um, you too. Happy New Year. And uh, Merry Christmas We'll see each other next year Judy This is our last show of the year I know So for uh, Mike and Judy And Billy and Rabbi Dan um, And Joe the Engineer uh, Happy New Year everybody Merry Christmas Late last winter I took a walk Wrapped up tight Around 8 o'clock I was down And then It started to rain As I walked to the tee To jump in front of the train I hated my job, I couldn't make a living I hated my place and I hated Thanksgiving It's been so long since I'd had drugs or sex I hated my cat and I hated my ex But there on a platform I bought a Christmas cookie And from the boombox of some blacked out bookie Came a Christmas song from long ago I felt like Proust as the music and the memories Made this then we come to roost It said Christmas That old song by Darling Love Christmas from the Phil Spector Christmas record, you know. Christmas, you gotta buy that whole fucking box set to get it. Christmas, with all my strength, I ran up those stairs. Tears in my eyes, in the black night, I stared. I swear I saw a star coming up in the east. So we were in New Jersey, it could have been a plane or something. Who knows? Life may suck, but Christmas is great. Quit. You're bitching and circle the day. Pull up your big boy pants and eat your fruit cake. Life may suck, but Christmas is great. There'll be lots of food and a check from home. And maybe, maybe, maybe if you don't forget, I'll say Nick will throw me a bone and leave me a couple of perks.
said all life may suck, but Christmas is great. Quit complaining and open your gate. Hang up the mistletoe and pile up your plate. Life may suck, but Christmas is great. A pack of smokes for Charlie and a brand new bike for Dad. Little bonds for Mommy and for all the kids she had. So have a Merry Christmas, may your night be filled with cheer. And hug a friend and fuck a foe and start the New Year clear. Happy fucking New Year's Eve and happy fucking Kwanzaa. Happy fucking Ramadan and happy fucking Hanukkah. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, and Mother Mary had a son. Deck the halls and trim the tree and goddamn bless us, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this program on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Heritage underscore Radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a non-profit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening. Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had Those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like, Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then, like, how how that all came to be and realize, like, wow, like, this piece of legislation, all this money, like, it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to The Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts.